Greetings, fellow travelers. Welcome to episode 10 of the hashtag Open to Work Journeys podcast. I'm Robert, your host and regular narrator on our chapters of change. This week, well, we're just going to get right to it. I'm going through some stuff. It's not all bad stuff, but I don't got the right stuff, baby. At least not for a full-blown episode this week. This podcast is a calling, and I don't want to ignore it or my dream pursuits so long as I still have the ability to make that choice without detrimental consequence. My solution? Two mini episodes this week. Today I'm bringing you another round of The Good Old Days, but as a springboard to a career retrospective on a prominent figure that is highly admired for many things, none more so than how he handled his own hashtag open to work journey. Enough intrigue and preamble, let's get rocking! In my last solo outing, we paid homage to and explored the teachings of the movie Dazed and Confused as it celebrated its 30th anniversary. Well, fast forward almost 10 years to the day in 2003, and we have two more epic movies hitting their 20 year marks, one of which was brought to us by the very same director of that classic. The film, School of Rock, directed by the brilliant Richard Linklater. The other, it doesn't matter what that movie is, yet. We're taking the Battle of the Band seriously this year. Good, because I need the money. You're out. You know what? I'm going to form my own band, and we are going to start a revolution. Come on, man. One show, $20,000 prize. I mean, don't you miss rocking out? Maybe it's time to give up those dreams. I did, and things are going really great for me. Temping. I'm not a temp. I'm a sub, and soon I'll be a certified teacher. Is this Mr. Schneebly? I'm the principal here at Horace Green Prep, and we need somebody to start immediately. So how much are we talking here? Six fifty a week. Hello, this is Ned Schneebly. Everyone, I'd like to introduce Mr. Schneebly. All right, look, I've got a hangover. Who knows what that means? Doesn't that mean you're drunk? No, it means I was drunk yesterday. I heard you in music class. You guys can really play. Why didn't anyone tell me? I think it's time we started our new class project. Rock band. Can we tell our parents? No! School of Rock was one of those movies that hit all the right notes. It's a hilarious musical comedy with a heartwarming message. The film not only entertained us, but also taught us some valuable lessons about passion, creativity, and the power of rock. I mean, who can forget Jack Black as Dewey Finn? His portrayal showed us that it's never too late to follow our dreams, even if it means pretending to be a substitute teacher and forming a rock band with a bunch of kids. You know, I'm dipping my toes into being a sub as well. Think I could find a group of kids to start a podcast with me? No, no, you're probably right. The parents weren't too happy with Dewey's antics in the movie, and I have a feeling winning the Spotify Battle of the Pods would not save me from a world of legal trouble. But I digress. The movie's message reminds us that conforming to society's expectations isn't always the path to happiness, which rings so true when I consider my hashtag open to work journey and the perceived expectations that come from being there. Calling back to my friend Kim, shout out the Human Geno Project, this movie is a great example of why the win isn't what matters when you become better regardless. Sometimes it's about embracing our true selves, practicing, refining, evolving, and sharing our talents with the world. In an era where everyone's a content creator, the film's timeless appeal only increases. Its success has even led to an adaptation into a stage production featuring music from the legendary Andrew Lloyd Webber. The 2003 prior revision of me was loving everything about this movie. I was such a Jack Black fanboy, I timed going to see this movie in the theater the same night he hosted Saturday Night Live so I could get my own personal Jables double feature. Much like Dewey Finn, I was stuck in between phases of life in my own way. I had just obtained my Bachelor's of Business Administration from Northwood University in May, but job hunting was producing very little hope. One of my closest friends was enrolled at nearby Central Michigan University, and I knew they had a pretty well-regarded teaching program. So I took the route that seemed to make the most sense, more education, but I went about it the wrong way. I chose to insert myself into a bigger comfort zone rather than taking myself out of one entirely. Before long, my class days became one easy excuse to skip and hang out after another. And before the first semester was up, I determined this path was not the answer. I had my education and achievements, no idea what to do with them, a failed pursuit behind me, and very little money to my name. I'd like to tell you what's next was the stuff of legends, 
but it's far more pedestrian than that. Instead, I want to tell you about our second movie this week and the story of its lead actor who springboarded one failed journey into mega stardom on a global level. Do you smell what I'm cooking yet? One job, I wipe your slate clean. You walk out of this house a free man. How much? 250 large. No problem. He's come to the other side of the world. Is that duct tape? To finish one last job. I'm looking for a man. His name's Travis Walker. Brown hair, face like a weasel. Do I know you? I'm taking you home, Travis. What's in Los Angeles? Your father. And you're not a dog about it. Oh. 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 So angry! Shut up. If only it were that simple. Apparently, he stumbled onto a trinket of some value in my jungle. Yep. I want it back. Also celebrating a 20-year anniversary is The Rundown, starring the likes of Rosario Dawson, Sean William Scott of American Pie fame, Christopher Walken doing what he does best, and oh right, some dude lighting the world of pro wrestling on fire named Dwayne Johnson, otherwise known as The Rock. Dwayne Johnson is a man who embodies the spirit of resilience and determination. From his humble beginnings to his status as a global icon, his journey is nothing short of extraordinary. You might remember The Rock as a WWE superstar prior to hitting Hollywood, but his path to success was far from easy. Before he decided to follow in his family's footsteps, his dream was to play in the NFL. He was off to a great start as well, playing for the Miami Hurricanes in college with some legitimate future NFL greats like Warren Sapp. But as with many cautionary tales, he was one of the much larger majority that did not make it onto a professional squad, at least not in the US. The Rock took a chance playing in the Canadian Football League, but ultimately got released. He returned home to his family with a failed journey behind him, a questionable future ahead, and only seven bucks in his pocket. Sound a little familiar? After much deliberation, he chose to move on from his football dream and attempt a new one, pro wrestling. In his early days with the WWE, he faced rejection and uncertainty as a third generation superstar following in the footsteps of Rocky Johnson and high chief Peter Maivia. But he persevered became a household name in the wrestling world and coined multiple wildly successful catchphrases that grown ass men will not refrain from breaking out as they see fit. As we now know, The Rock's ambition didn't stop there. He made a leap from the wrestling ring to the big screen, beginning with roles in the Mummy franchise before transitioning in a more comedic direction with The Rundown, which we recognized earlier. From there, his acting career took off like a rocket. Johnson's filmography is nothing short of impressive. He's starred in a wide range of movies, from action-packed blockbusters like the Fast and Furious franchise to heartwarming comedies like Jumanji. But it doesn't end there. The Rock's influence reaches beyond movies. He's a successful entrepreneur with a line of Under Armour clothing called Project Rock, which I cannot wear enough of, <laughs> a tequila brand called Terramana, and he's even ventured into the world of professional football as an owner of the XFL. But perhaps what's most inspiring about Dwayne Johnson is his commitment to giving back. He's a philanthropist who's dedicated to making a difference in the lives of others, from supporting Maui wildfire victims to helping a fellow pro wrestling family in the wake of the tragic loss of one of their own. The Rock's journey reminds us that success isn't just about getting that achievement unlocked on our individual goals. It's about how we handle adversity through it. Life can throw obstacles in our path and we might hit rock bottom pun intended. But it's how we bounce back, how we chase our dreams, and how we keep that indomitable spirit alive that truly matters. Fast forward to today, and the rock star continues to shine brighter than ever. He's not just a Hollywood A-lister, pro wrestling legend, and global megastar. He's the hardest worker in any room, and his success reflects upon that everyday commitment. So, whether it's becoming a rock star by way of substitute teaching, entertainment superstardom by way of a dream pursuit unfulfilled, the chances for the next chapter of your story to be the greatest one yet could come from anywhere. You just have to be willing to chase. We'll be back later this week with the hashtag open to work update, some lessons learned, and a look forward to some upcoming content. So please stay tuned. I'm Robert Haller saying thanks for listening. Please like, comment, subscribe on your favorite podcast service, and share socially. And if you ever want to reach out to the podcast, you can email me at hallerifyouhearme at gmail.com. That's right, haller if you hear me.
Thanks for working together.